Good morning again. English now. Um, actually, it's my pleasure to introduce the first panel, which will be moderated by Steve Song. Steve, welcome to Dakar. Um, I, I just want to say something. Uh, we have never met. We've exchanged emails, but I'm a huge fan of yours for that fiber mapping project, just for that. So, Steve, welcome. Please welcome Stephen Brook. And if I could ask uh, Paul and Kai to, to join me on stage. Um, I've been asked to say um, a, f a few opening remarks about TV White Spaces for those who are perhaps unfamiliar with uh, TV White Spaces technology. And um, so for those of you in the audience who know a great deal more about TV White Spaces than I do, I hope you'll forgive me for my 50,000 foot view that I'm about to give you. Um, is there a clicker? Okay. So, I, and I hope you'll, you'll indulge me with a brief philosophical moment um, before we go into this, uh, with this quote from, uh, from Ben Okri, uh, Nigerian writer, who says, stories are the secret reservoir of values. Change the stories that individuals or nations live by and tell themselves, and you change the individuals or nations. And I think that's particularly relevant for this event now because we are changing the story of access in Africa. So as little as four years ago, this was the picture of access in terms of undersea cable access on, on, on the continent. One thin undersea cable controlled by a cartel. And, and this is the potential picture next year in terms of access. So we're seeing a transformation of, uh, of access on the continent. But all this capacity, which is arriving on the shores of Africa, has to find a way to actually reach people. And in terms of technology, um, there are many options, but the, the, uh, the technology that has achieved the, uh, the most significant impact are wireless technologies. But wireless technologies are, are not a silver bullet. They present their own problems. Uh, and the chief of which is simply gaining access to the electromagnetic spectrum to be able to use these amazing revolutions in, in, in wireless access. So, and there are significant barriers, probably one of the biggest of which are the administrative barriers to, uh, to access. Wireless technology is changing, you know, on an almost monthly basis. Every, uh, every few months we hear tell of some new technology that is available to improve the efficiency, the range of access, and governments and regulators are expected to come up with a framework that not only uh, allows them to, uh, uh, allows technology to evolve, but also ensures uh, a fair playing field. And this is a, a, this is a almost insurmountable challenge for, to, to keep pace with, the, uh, with change. So uh, to come up with a way for regulators to, to come up with frameworks that, that allow technology, to, technologies to evolve is a huge challenge. And another big challenge now, uh, which is, which is a, a newer one, is the financial barrier to access. So as uh, the availability or demand for spectrum has eclipsed the apparent availability of spectrum, the uh, um, premium that people are willing to pay for, uh, for access to spectrum has shot up. And now we see spectrum licenses auctioned for millions, if not billions of dollars, uh, putting access well beyond the reach of an entrepreneur, well beyond the reach of um, uh, of, of smaller players, and also um, bringing it with all the perils that large amounts of money bring in terms of uh, influence and potential corruption. It becomes a huge, a huge burden. So what does, um, what does spectrum allocation look like? Well, if we look at the television spectrum, um, the regulation for which was really designed back in the 1930s, you can imagine it a bit like a hotel room where television broadcasters were given rooms 
for their, for their television channels. And unlike a, a normal hotel, those rooms were, are permanently available to them. Wherever they go, their room is always ready for them in the hotel. And, um, and this uh, um, situation, it's, it's actually yeah, worse than that in terms of uh, not only are their rooms always available, but because of the design of the first early generations of television transmission technologies, which basically had to shout to reach the relatively deaf first generation televisions, they had to reserve the rooms next to them in the hotel because to, to actually make sure that, um, that neighbors in, uh, in television broadcast didn't interfere with each other. So these, these empty rooms in the hotel are what uh, are referred to now as television white spaces, the white spaces between television channels. Now, interestingly for this picture, there is one tiny room in the hotel that nobody really gave much thought to, a tiny, you, you might think of it as the back, the back room kitchen uh, of the hotel, which was the ISM, or unlicensed band. And in that room, there were no reservations. Anyone can stay, and anyone can do whatever they want, as long as they keep their voices down, and uh, as long as they play nicely with others. And that tiny back room kitchen has turned out to be an explosion of innovation. And uh, most significantly in the, in the uh, unlicensed band has been the growth of Wi-Fi technology, going from access point to laptop to smartphones to tablets, even to weigh scales and, uh, and refrigerators. Now, this year, I think tele um, Wi-Fi chipsets will actually outship mobile phones. So it's a, a huge and I think unsung um, success story. Um, and here's some indication of the impact of this unlicensed spectrum. These are stats from earlier this year on smartphone data traffic in a number of different countries, looking at how much of the data traffic from a smartphone travels over Wi-Fi versus how much travels uh, over mobile networks. And overwhelmingly, the majority of traffic on these devices that we call mobile technologies is actually traveling over Wi-Fi or unlicensed spectrum. It almost makes you think that you know, maybe we should call these Wi-Fi devices with a kind of add-on mobile phone dimension. So on average, about 75% of traffic is traveling over, over, over Wi-Fi networks. So what opportunities? I mean, how can we, how can we capitalize on, that, on, that, on that, that innovation that was unleashed in, in a relatively unloved spectrum band? Well, the next opportunity, it seems, and a particular opportunity for Africa, is this notion of television white spaces spectrum, which allows for the secondary reuse of spectrum, uh, 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 which is different from a primary, primary spectrum holder in that a secondary spectrum holder must make way for the primary, primary user. And television white spaces is designed so that it can dynamically reallocate itself into empty spaces on the go. Uh, sorry. Um, it, it's particularly ideal for rural access because the spectrum band it occupies has great propagation uh, characteristics. So what that means is Whereas with Wi-Fi, you have to uh, take great care to have a line of sight connection. Television white spaces spectrum, you can actually propagate uh, you know, very easily through obstacles like trees, buildings, which would otherwise have been a problem for a Wi-Fi connection. It's particularly good in a, in a region like this, which has very few Tele terrestrial television channels. So the average African country, uh, Russell, you'll correct me, I think, is somewhere between, has somewhere between two and four terrestrial tele uh, uh, broadcast channels, which means there's a huge amount of spectrum uh, lying fallow at the moment. And, uh, and, and finally, and probably most importantly, there's no reallocation of spectrum required. This is something that can be done tomorrow and can be done dynamically and adjust to changes in the future. So we have a scenario then where television spectrum can happily coexist um, uh, with uh, a digital broadband technology and it can happen very, very quickly. And really that's all I want to say about, um, 
uh, about TV white spaces, uh, except to say that uh, uh, these last three words I'd like to leave you with, which is open spectrum data, uh, and that this is an amazing resource, uh, a radio spectrum that belongs to all of us, and it's, but it's very difficult to manage if we don't have access to information about allocation, about assignments and use. Thank you.